Hello and good day my fellow weebs, my name is Dr Mim and for those of you that don't know me, I'm a medical doctor in the UK and also an avid and proud anime fan. I'm hitting nerd levels that you could only ever dream of. Anyway, today we're going to be watching Cells at Work. This is a completely original idea that no other doctors on YouTube have ever even thought of doing before, so I'm just going to take this opportunity to be proud of that fact and let's get into it. Oh, that looks like... Is it just me or is, uh, does Red Blood Cell Chan look uh, kind of kawaii? Okay, so we might have a bit of a subtle detail there. So she's got AE3803 on a cap. AE possibly for him? 3803? No idea. No, I'm not going to pretend like that's something mind blowing that I'm smart enough to know. The vascular endothelial cells. Okay, so we've got a medical term right off the bat. So the vascular endothelial cells are the cells lining the blood vessels. So anything with the term vascular in it basically means to do with the blood vessels. So in this case, something's breaching the gates. Let's see what it is. Oh, damn. What do we got? I'm getting very strong one punch man vibes here. Damn! Wait, if a bacteria has got blood of its own, does that mean that there's cells within the bacteria's blood that are also fighting off other pathogens that are trying to infect the bacteria? Or am I just thinking too hard into it? She's like, oh no, you've got my cousins and my family all over your body. There's a bit of information that they've given here. So neutrophils comprise over half the white blood cells in the body. That is true. I'm not sure which method of attack the white cells are using in this particular scene. So there's three main ways that white cells can attack like incoming bacteria and things. One of them is called phagocytosis, where they basically just eat them. Another one is called degranulation, where they produce substances and chemicals that help to just directly attack the bacteria. And the third way is by creating these things called extracellular traps or nets where they basically create these fibrous webs that can actually capture and destroy the things that are invading the body. So it's kind of like a Spider-Man, but uh, in your blood. How does that make sense? Again, he's splattered with blood. Are they not blood themselves? Curious. So... <laughs> they really thought of everything. You know what? I gotta give it to them. They thought of everything here. So what those gates represent are valves in your blood vessels. So you usually get them in your veins. They could be veins in your legs, in your arms, or even the ones closer to your heart. And it just stops the blood from going the opposite direction because obviously you want all the deoxygenated blood to go back towards your heart before being pumped to the lungs and then going back towards the heart and then to the body. So the valves just help to keep things going in the right direction. And I think they depicted it pretty well there. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> <laughs> so she's freaking out because the spleen is actually the place where red blood cells get broken down and, and destroyed, basically. So yeah, that's why she had to just get out quick. Nigete, as they say. Oh! Close the door. <laughs> just can't get it. So yeah, this is... <laughs> Jesus, what a scene to stop on. But yeah, basically, um, this is kind of accurate. You can get bacteria and other pathogens in the body that will just kind of hide in certain areas, whether it be in the lungs, in lymph nodes around the body, or in different organs, and they can just sit there for a while, not causing many problems, until they just decide to come out and just replicate again and, and cause lots of issues. One common bacteria that is known to do this is TB or tuberculosis, which can actually just stay dormant in the lungs for many years without causing any issues. You might not even know it's there. And then one day, just decides to pop out and cause problems. What is that? A capsule? Whoa. What's going on? Okay, I think the medical accuracy has officially stopped at this point. Everything up until this moment has been completely 100% medically accurate. And now it's finally stopped. A bacterium's capsule is designed to protect itself. It can't be used as like a defense mechanism to throw it on other cells. It's, it'll be the equivalent of me just like taking my skin off and throwing it at the enemy. Yeah. 
All right, okay, so we know what we're dealing with. The pneumococcus, or by its longer name, Streptococcus pneumoniae. It's a bacteria that, as they rightly said, can lead to pneumonia. And it's actually one of the most common bacteria that causes that. Most of the time in a healthy person, the body can actually just fight off these bacterium and viruses without any issues. But if they do need extra help, we're lucky that we do have a lot of good antibiotics that can fight Streptococci. Mr. White Blood Cell here did mention the capsule again, which can make it tricky sometimes to kill these types of bacteria. But like I said, there are some pretty good antibiotics that specifically work to break down that capsule so that they can get inside and attack the bacteria more directly. So it's not the end of the world just yet. Let's see what happens. <laughs> If it's in the blood, that could mean sepsis. Sepsis is a generalized full body infection when the bacteria from whichever part that it initially came into your body through gets into the bloodstream and infects your whole body systemically. So that's not going to be good news if that happens. Okay, a lot of terms being thrown around there, but basically, bacteremia is bacteria in the blood. The meninges are one of the linings around the brain and the spinal cord, and yeah, they could potentially be infected by these pneumococcus dudes. It's not too common, but it can happen. But the main issue here is sepsis, like I mentioned earlier, so they're probably going to try and avoid that, I'm hoping. <laughs> <laughs> I was just gonna say, like, that little receptor. It's the most dorkiest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Child labor. Only allowed in a Japanese anime and nowhere else. So yeah, the main job is involved with repairing broken structures within the body. So if you get like a cut on your body or something, the platelets will be involved in kind of gluing things back together and forming the base structure, sort of like the scaffolding. Another very subtle detail, but something that definitely required a lot of research is the fact that they're opening boxes of CA2, which I guess is referring to calcium. And calcium release is actually involved in activation of platelets. So. That is some that is some good research, Japanese anime directors. <laughs> Alright, so we've got another cell that's entered the body, the helper T cell. It's actually one of the most important cells involved in the immune response in the body. It's involved in signaling the other white cells to activate and actually do their jobs to fight the bacteria. I like this depiction of it where he's just like sitting in an office giving orders because that's kind of what they do. They're not actually really involved in actively attacking things. Oh, here are the big boys. This is what we've been waiting for. Killer T cells. Bam! Killer T cells are mainly involved in attacking virus infected cells and also cancer cells, but they do play a role in bacterial infections as well. So yeah, they are just trying to scare her because alpha hemolytic bacteria actually only cause oxidization of the iron in the red blood cells, which gives it like a kind of greenish color. It's the beta hemolytic bacteria that actually completely destroy the red blood cells. Still not really a nice thing to turn green though, if you think about it. <laughs> So the alveolus is the smallest part of the lung where the gas exchange actually occurs. So it looks like she's going there to exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen. And the exchange happens between the capillaries and the alveolus. So that's where the blood vessels are very, very thin that things like gas and molecules of oxygen and carbon dioxide can go back and forth. So I wonder how they're going to portray that. Probably just throwing boxes across a doorway or something, maybe. <laughs> they've, they've somehow managed to make every single process in the human body like extremely kawaii. It's so unnecessary, but I love it. There's nothing more I really need to add. I mean, this show is just so medically accurate. Yeah, one at a time. Red blood cells go through capillaries one at a time generally. So that's it. I might as well just leave now. It's all self-explanatory at this point. <laughs> Subway sandwiches, the best form of nutrition. Not sponsored, by the way. But hey, think about it. I mean, that's 
that's kind of what the capsule is for. I've never heard of the capsule being used as a smoke screen. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they missed that in medical school. I don't know. I might have to look that up. Sounds a bit far-fetched though. <laughs> Bronchial tubes. So those are the pipes that transport the air to and from your lungs. Generally, the path that oxygen takes to get to your blood cells involves going down the trachea, which is your main windpipe. Then you have the main bronchi. Then you have smaller bronchi, eventually leading to bronchioles. And eventually they get to the alveoli, which are the single cell thick balloons where gas exchange can actually occur that we saw a bit earlier. <laughs> In reality, one single bacterium like this won't really cause this many issues. By this point, if it's a concern, there'd probably be thousands and thousands of them already. I have no idea what's happening here. Sneeze. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, okay, I get it. Okay, okay, it makes sense now. It kind of makes sense now. Probably not because the white blood cell is going to die in just a few hours and the red blood cell doesn't have that much of a life ahead of it either, so... Sorry guys. You know what? That was actually quite enjoyable, I'm not gonna lie. If I had watched this when I was younger, it would have definitely encouraged me more to go into medicine. I'm, I'm that kind of easily influenced guy, okay? What can I say? Anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you did enjoy. If you did, please do leave a like and hit the subscribe button if you haven't done already. It only takes a second and it really does help out the channel if you want to see more from me. I'm also streaming on Twitch throughout the week if you want to see me there. We play games, we just chat, we just do whatever. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Stay safe, take care, stay healthy. Peace.